just want to welcome everyone that is uh, tuning in online. Uh, we're so ex excited uh, right now to be together, to be together as uh, the church, uh, to be together as humanity. Um, I want to just welcome every one of you that's uh, tuning in in Colorado, uh, Washington, Oregon, if you are tuning in internationally, uh, from Lebanon or from wherever you are, we just want to welcome you as humanity coming together in a time where there is fear, uh, where some of us are scared, but yet we're coming together and I pray that this message uh, will give you joy, will give you encouragement uh, during this time. If, for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, my name is Andrew and I am the campus pastor at our Wash Park campus. I'm excited to come together today as one church in two locations here at our Highlands campus in Denver. Uh, for those of you that are a part of the St. John's Renewal Communities, also for those of you that would like to be engaged uh, during this time where we've kind of turned into a distance learning uh, church and school community, um, I wanna encourage you to stay engaged. Um, you can tune in at sjdenver.org. Uh, that's the website for our Wash Park campus. Uh, also, RenewalDenver.org. You can find all of the information that you need during this time uh, to worship with us, to hear the Word of God, to continue to be fed, um, and then also to know uh, what announcements are taking place uh, for the community. On the lower right-hand part of your screen, there's a phone number. Uh, that phone number is so that you could text your questions in today. If you have any questions about the worship service or the sermon, any questions that you have during this time, uh, me and Pastor AJ will be here after the sermon is finished, um, and we're going to do our best to answer your questions. So I invite you uh, to stay engaged. Um, today, we are in the middle of a sermon series inspired by a book uh, by Francis. Francis Chan called Multiply. Um, and in that particular book, we are going through the narrative of Scripture because we believe that God's story impacts our daily reality. And that when we get to know God, we get to know who He is, we get to know who we are, we get to know why we're here, we get to know where we're going. And so um, we're in the middle of that sermon series right now. I was tempted to just say, hey, let's preach a coronavirus topical sermon today. Um, but instead of just preaching a coronavirus topical sermon today, um, I am hoping that we will see as we go through this text of Scripture together that all Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching in whatever situation that you are in. So I hope and pray that the inspiration of the Holy Spirit would come through even on a sermon uh, on the, uh, where you might be like, it's the Ten Commandments. How is that relevant to the situation that we are in today? I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would see that for your life and see the relevance that the uh, Word of God has for you. Um, so pom-poms on a, a beanie cap. What are those used for? Wh or rather, what is the purpose of a pom-pom uh, on a beanie cap? Um, in the 18th century, it was actually French sailors who wore pom-poms to protect heads from low deck ceilings. Interesting information. Uh, what about the square patch on a backpack? Just right there. You can let ropes and hooks through it, but today it is mostly just an accessory. What about the hole between the camera lens and flash on your iPhone? Does anybody know what that is used for? Uh, it's actually an auxiliary mic, makes sounds clear, helps Siri understand accents, reduces noise captured by the main microphone. Uh, yesterday when I was practicing, uh, this was actually one that my wife Daisy knew. She knew one out of five. I knew zero out of five. Um, what about the number 57 on a Heinz uh, ketchup bottle? I actually didn't know that one. I bet you know it. Um, it's the total number of the types of ketchup produced by the company. How about the switch on the rear view mirror? I don't even know that this thing existed. 
It actually protects drivers from being blinded by drivers behind you at night. Maybe that is useful in some circumstances. Uh, so uh, the question that we have this morning as we go through the Ten Commandments is this. What are the Ten Commandments useful for? What are they for in our lives? And the Apostle Paul gives us this summary in the New Testament for followers of Jesus so that we can know what is the Ten Commandments. Also, I'm going to refer to them as the moral law of God. How are those relevant to our lives and, or what are they useful for? Romans 13, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10, Paul says this. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And so... This morning, we're going to take a look at that concept based on the moral law of God, and we're going to get some practical instructions in this situation where we have fear going on. How do we love God? How do we love people? That is, in summary, what the moral law of God is all about, um, and I pray that the love of God would come into your heart and inspire you uh, so that you are inspired in a new way to love God and love people around you. Uh, we live in a time where we do a lot of speculation. Speculation is, okay, what do I do? What do I believe? Who am I? What should I do for my neighbor? What should I do for the people around me? Revelation is different than speculation. God reveals to us, how is it that we love others? God speaks and teaches us, how is it that we care for our neighbor? How is it that we serve our city? Um, the first step in the relationship with God is that we have to agree. If we disagree with God, um, we aren't going to be able to follow his practical instructions for loving him and loving others. For those of you who have children, you know that um, if your children constantly disagree, there's going to be no follow through. Um, it's the same way in our relationship with God. God is inviting us to agree on how is it that we love? How is it that we care? How is it that we serve in a time like this? And so we're going to rewind to the timeless truth of the Ten Commandments, 1300 B.C., and how God gives his moral law to us and how he gives it to us so that we would have it for all of time uh, for our lives. And uh, last Sunday, Pastor Michael did an excellent job talking about our redemption uh, from the nation of uh, Egypt, the Israelites, the Hebrew people are center on this narrative. They were redeemed from slavery to e from Egypt. Now they're traveling in the wilderness. They're on their way to the promised land. But now God is going to appear on the same mountain he appeared to Moses. It's called Mount Sinai. And I have an infallible image from uh, Google Images. So you know that it's exactly what Mount Sinai looks like. Um, but on Mount Sinai, God appears to Moses again. And he says, okay, now I've rescued you. Now you're my people. Now here is my moral law that I want to give to you that will set you apart from all of the other nations. All of the other nations are running after false gods. All of the other nations are living in speculation. But I want you to have my moral law so that you can know my will for your life. And so God appears. Um, there's smoke. There's lightning. It develops and it elicits fear in Moses and the people that are surrounding there is a healthy fear of God in this particular narrative that inspires us to say, okay, you're God, I am not. I'm going to be still, and I'm going to know you're God. I'm in a time of need. They were in a time of need. I want you to speak to me. I want you to speak to me and you. 
in this time of need because I need truth. I need guidance. I need to know what to do uh, during this time, during this season of my life. And so here are the Ten Commandments that God communicates, and this is extracted from Exodus chapter 20, which is our main text, Uh, but this is a summary of what God says to Moses. He says this, you shall have no other gods. You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your mother and your father. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Belongings. And so what I want to say about each of these Ten Commandments is is this. All of them are referenced and unpacked in the New Testament for the follower of Jesus. Some of them are unpacked in greater depth and take on more relevance and meaning, but All of them are referenced positively in the New Testament. You can also think of each one of them as categories or umbrellas of guidance and practical instruction regarding how we're going to love God and love people. And that's where I'm going to go next. The first three commandments, also known as the first table of the law, is about loving God. The first one says this, You shall have no other gods before me what God is saying there is this I want to be first in your life I want to be your foundation I want to be central not peripheral I don't want to be an assistant I want to be your God I want to be your Lord maybe during this season of life with this uh, pandemic that is occurring it is like a time in our lives where perhaps for some of you there is a time of reprioritization. How am I going to uh, prioritize my time, my relationships? Maybe for some of you, uh, including myself, maybe our schedules have gotten out of control. Uh, we're over scheduled. There's too much going on, and God has become an assistant rather than being Lord. Maybe God is uh, not primary, but rather he is secondary. And during this season of your life, perhaps he is saying to you, I want to be first. I want to be your God. I'm inviting you to a relationship with me. I am your God. I am your Savior. You are mortal. There's sin in this world. This world is fallen. There's sickness and there's death and there's pain and there's suffering. I want to be your healer. I want to be your redeemer. I want to be first in your life. I love you. I've come for you. I'm here right now. I'm talking to you. Come to me and I will draw near to you. Also, In the third commandment, it says this, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. In the Old Testament, this is a day set apart for worship. It's a day set apart for rest. In the New Testament, we hear in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, that the apostle John starts to worship on what's called the Lord's Day. That's the day Jesus rose again from the dead, Sunday. That is the day that Christians for 2,000 years have been worshiping Jesus together for a day of rest and a day of worship. I want to encourage you and invite you during this season of uh, a little bit of distance uh, learning, uh, social uh, distance that we're all having, there's going to be that temptation to disengage I want to invite you, uh, if you live alone or you are married or your family, Um, Whatever your situation is, to come together, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, let's worship the Lord. Uh, Also, the sermons uh, moving forward will be posted on both the St. John's Denver app as well as the Renewal Church app by noon, Mountain Time, each Sunday. That content is relevant or there for you and relevant for you to feed you, to nurture you during this time, uh, to guide you, to give you encouragement, to give you hope to give you meaning. Also, I want to encourage you to continue as life groups. If you've determined to meet electronically uh, through video call, that's actually how my life group's going to meet this evening is through a group video call. However you decide to meet together, I want to encourage you to keep God first in your life, 
he loves you, and he is here. The second table of the law, that's commandments uh, chapters, or rather, 4 through 10. I'm just going to highlight a couple of them that are, I believe, practical and relevant to us during this season of our lives. Uh, the fourth commandment says, honor your father and your mother. I admit that during this season of uh, dealing with the coronavirus, um, I've been since Friday and then yesterday on conference calls, video calls, seeking to improve communication uh, or seeking to communicate with our church, uh, and then also just preparing this message. And I'm like, I haven't even made a phone call to my mom and dad during this time. Um, my mom and dad are in their 70s. Um, perhaps some of you also have uh, parents that are still alive, that are getting older, that are more vulnerable uh, to this virus during this season. I want, I, and I can't speak to every person in every situation, so I'm preaching to the community when I say these things. But if your parents are still alive, I want to encourage you to love them, reach out to them, serve them. During a time like this, God calls on us to say, what is most important? This commandment reminds us of the importance of our families. God uh, is calling on us to love and serve the elderly. For example, um, I come from Seattle, and my older sister is now running errands for my mom so that she doesn't have to go to the store um, and so that she can be there uh, for my mom during this season. Maybe you live in a more physically distant place from your parents, and that's okay. But you can still make use of the communication that is given to you during this time to love them and to encourage them. Also, I want to expand this category to also include those of you who have children that are living in the home. Maybe life has gotten so busy, and now, by the grace of God, it's going to slow down a little bit. It's going to slow down a little bit. And so I want to invite you. What are those meaningful conversations, those spiritual conversations that you can have during this time? As you are sitting at home, uh, perhaps it's time to pull out your Bible, to pull out that devotional, to pull out that children's Bible, to have a time in prayer and coming together and to talk about more meaningful things. Also, if you are married and your kids don't live at home, perhaps God is inviting you to say, how can we reconnect on a spiritual level during this season? To have God as central to our marriage, to invite him back in to our lives so that we are renewed, we're focused on loving him and then also loving one another. Also, I just wanted to highlight a couple other commandments uh, on uh, commandment, you shall not murder, you shall not covet. Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer, actually unpacks you shall not murder to include not just murdering people, but also not doing anything to harm my neighbor. When it's talking about my neighbor, it's not just talking about your physical neighbor that lives next door to you, but it's talking about the people around you. What can I do to not harm the people around me? And what can I do to love them? What we're seeing around us during this time is humanity's animal instincts are kicking in. We're getting into this uh, self-preservation mode. We are, um, instead of loving others, we're the, the animal instincts are kicking in and we're only thinking about ourselves. Um, I got online, uh, I think it was Thursday, and I just wanted to get some hand sanitizer. Um, and so I was trying to look at some hand sanitizer on Amazon Prime, and it said that the shipping for hand sanitizer was $60 just for a little container of hand sanitizer. Um, so that tells you something's gone wrong with humanity, if, if that's happening to us right now. Uh, and then also, like you guys already know, like somebody started the toilet paper uh, craziness. Um, and so if you go to the store, there's no toilet paper right now. So somebody just started this crazy. So everybody's like, okay, now I got to beat the other people. 
uh, that are going after this. Um, and now there's no toilet paper left for my neighbor. Um, I actually got on to peel.com and I bought some bamboo toilet paper for $30 for just a roll, a pack of 24. Um, so hopefully there's something to the bamboo part um, and that's really uh, important. Uh, but anyway, there, we're, we're not thinking about other people right now. We're just thinking about me. Um, there's a boy who has a, a rare form of uh, brain cancer in London, and he needs access, and his family needs access to masks. But his parents said that because people are stockpiling so heavily on masks right now, there's no masks for this family. And so, as we look at these commandments on loving people around us, I'm not saying not to take care of yourself, but what I am saying is think about others as well. What if there's little boys and little girls like this around the world that are in need of something, but we're hoarding and we're coveting and we're uh, hiding things away in our basement and, and we're not leaving any resources or items for other people that are in greater need than us. Jesus was asked, what are the two greatest commandments? And he said this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And he said the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love people, timeless truth, going way back from ancient times, still relevant to our time today. Now, there may be some of you that are listening online, or um, I'm actually preaching to a room of 10 people right now uh, who are just really totally engaged by this message. Can, can I get an amen? amen? All right, they're here. And so uh, you may be a little convicted after you hear these commandments. They're instructions, but then they also can show us our sin as well. If you're convicted right now, what I would say to you is this. That's God's love for you as well. When God convicts us, he's loving us because the purpose of the Ten Commandments is not so that we can get to heaven. The purpose of the Ten Commandments is to show us that we need Jesus so we can get to heaven. We need something greater than the coronavirus slowing down. We need a greater answer. We need someone that's higher, that's transcendent from another world to give us hope that's unlimited, hope for us now, hope that's certain, and his name is Jesus Christ. And so the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 4, fast forwarding to the New Testament to give us proclamation uh, for us during our time as followers of Jesus or if you are listening as a seeker, this is what he says is our solution. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. Jesus came subject to this moral law God sent him to buy freedom when he died on the cross for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Jesus comes to restore your relationship with God. See, our problem is a problem called sin and it separates us from a holy God. That's what we're kind of, we're feeling the effects of that right now that we're fallen, that we're uh, fearful, that we don't want to get sick, that we don't want to die. But Jesus has come to restore our relationship with God. And when he kept the law on our behalf, he kept it in perfection and holiness. The good news is this, that on the cross, Jesus took your sin and my sin. And that in an exchange, he gives us his righteousness, his holiness, his innocence. And now his holiness represents you before the Father. And when you trust in him as your Savior and you have faith in him as your Lord and as your Savior, you're joined to him and you get eternal life. Eternal life is not just a future idea, but it's a present reality. 
It's a present reality for you now as you are worried, as you have fear, as you don't know what the future holds. The eternal life that comes through Jesus Christ is yours as you are joined to him by faith. And then also, on the third day, he rose again and he conquered death and he conquered um, Satan. He conquered it all for you and for me. And so when we're joined to him, he says this, because I live, you also will live. Because I love, you will also have my love for all eternity. The Old Testament said he was going to come the first time. Did he come? Yes, he came. The New Testament is saying he will come again. And when he comes again, he is going to renew the world as we see it now. This world as that you are looking at right now will have no more death, no more mourning, no more pain, no more sickness, no more sorrow, for the old order of things would have passed away. That is what is coming for us who believe in Jesus and what he says uh, about this particular party is it's going to be a renewal party, a restoration party when he comes again. And this is the greater need that we have more than this pandemic slowing down. We need a savior and his name is Jesus Christ. Wherever you are today, wherever you're at in your relationship with God, whether you consider yourself a follower of Jesus or a seeker or an agnostic, wherever you're at, I just wanna invite you because I wanna see everybody at that party. God wants to see everyone at that party. And what he says is this, I desire all to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. If you are feeling like, hey, I've come to the end of myself. I'm running out of answers. I'm running out of options. I feel weak. I feel scared. I don't know what the future holds. Maybe God is saying to you this morning, come to me. And I'm going to come near to you. He's inviting you in. And if you want to begin a relationship with God and you know that you, you want a more personal relationship with him, he says these two words, surrender and believe. Surrender is when we say, I'm done doing it my way. I'm done being autonomous and independent from you. I believe and I receive the gift of eternal life into my heart right now by faith alone in Christ alone and what he has done for me. You could do that and you can say that right now sitting on your couch. You can declare, I believe and I receive the grace of God as it comes to me through Jesus Christ. So, he gives us the Holy Spirit, and then coming back to the Ten Commandments, are they gifts or are they rules? So far, they've just been rules. You shall not do this, you shall do that. But as a follower of Jesus, I want to invite you to see it this way. They now become gifts because they no longer condemn you, but they guide you for how it is that we can live our lives during this time. For example, uh, the fourth commandment is referring to the gift of family. During this time, God might be calling on you to uh, refocus your time on what matters more. Uh, commandments 5 through 10 uh, focus on the gift of loving relationships. If you are single, if you live alone, um, if you are lonely, uh, who of your friends at this particular time are, have a propensity to fear and anxiety? Who of your friends are likely uh, alone right now? I want to encourage you today to call two or three people, phone call, video call, encourage them with the love that you have from God to love your neighbor as yourself. Pastor Michael's probably going to call 20 people, so he's going to blow us out. So I'm just inviting you to call two or three. Love others as God has loved you. Also, I want to encourage you to make use of all the technology that you have during this time. While you may in wisdom practice social distance, um, you can still love. It just takes a different form than it did 
before. Also, I just want to say this. There are likely people that are going to contact you during this season, during the next month or so, that have needs. There's a need that they have. I just wanted to uh, share this story from my time uh, when I was living in Oregon. I was going to Ikea in Portland, and a need was about to come up. Uh, we left Ikea, and we're driving south on Interstate 5. We're just driving. And I have uh, four children now, but at the time I had three. And uh, my daughter, Layla, just started throwing up all over uh, the, the, the car. Thanks be to God, it was a rental car. Um, but then also, my older daughter, Miriam, started throwing up too. I was like, what the heck is going on? And then Daisy started throwing up, and then I started throwing up, and so now we have a car filled with throw up. It smelled really good. It was just a real awesome situation. We had to stop at a gas station, and we were getting barf bags, um, and we didn't know what was going on. So we were really sick. I felt like I was going to die. We finally made it home, and I called a friend, and this friend, his name was Ryan. He said, you know what? I know there's germs in this house. I know I could get sick, but I'm going to come and help. Now, he came with a mask on. He didn't come giving me high fives and giving me a hug, but rather he came with a little mask protecting himself with wisdom. But he gave me the things I needed at a desperate time. He gave my family some medicine, some Gatorade, whatever we needed, and then he left. Love propels you and compels you to take some risks. Love's going to compel you during this season to take some risks. And I'm not saying not to use wisdom. Uh, you know, Ryan came in with a mask and he wasn't giving me a high five. But the love that he showed me is something that I'll never forget. Move forward with faith and wisdom. May love compel you to do what God is calling on you to do. And then also... Um, with the ninth and 10th commandments of coveting, you can see them about coveting or you can see them about the gift of contentment. They can lead you to fear or it can lead you to faith. During this season, you might be thinking, am I going to have enough? Am I going to have a job? Um, am I going to have enough resources, money? How are we going to get by during this time? I want to remind you of this truth from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. This promise I've seen to be true uh, for believers at all times. Jesus says this. Seek the kingdom of God and my righteousness and everything will be given to you as well. Seek me, I will provide. This coronavirus, it has a duration as far as it being a threat. We need an answer that is greater than it just slowing down. You and I need God and his provision and his providence who will be with us and stay with us today and all eternity. God loves you. And in summary, I would say this. Receive God's love. Believe and receive God's love. And then also Give God's love. There's going to be a temptation to retreat. I want to encourage you to research, to love your neighbor and serve your city in different ways. We are here for something greater, something higher, something transcendent from another world. Uh, God's moral law for you is for your flourishing so that you would flourish in this kind of a situation as he tells you this, I am your God, you are my son, you are my daughter. I love you today, and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Application question uh, for you uh, this morning as we tune in. Here is the question for us to discuss on your couch or this afternoon. What is one way God is calling on you to love right now during this season?